Welcome aboard, Time Cruisers! I'm your host, R.R. Slugger, and tonight we're traveling on the 6497 Twisted Time Train. Please have your tickets ready as we prepare to depart for the Twilight Zone. What does it mean, exact change? Standing as the largest set in 1997's Time Twisters sub-theme, the Twisted Time Train makes for a fitting send-off to the series' antagonists. Consisting of a pair of rolling stock and a steam locomotive, this train packs all of the stylings and play features the Time Twisters are known for. We're going to take a look at it all, but first, let's start with our new and returning faces. Tony Twister and his brother, Professor Millennium, both make their final appearances here. Joining them once again from the Whirling Time Warper is their ghostly companion, complete with suitcase and magic wand. The set also features a classic floppy arm skeleton, adorned with neckerchief and pointed hat. Perhaps this is the spirit of a powerful deceased wizard, or maybe just a ghoul playing dress up. Either way, their inclusion is a welcome one. In addition to the minifigures, we also receive a generous selection of accessories, some of which I have already mentioned, but others include a printed stick of dynamite, chrome silver sword, and equally shiny duo of daggers. The lavish amount of chrome in this set doesn't stop there. These headlights share the same chrome color, and two Time Twister staple bugles are also included, bringing the combined sub-theme total to six, making for quite the brass section. All in all, these are some great accessories, but I would be lying if I said I didn't think the Whirling Time Warper featured a better selection. Let's see if the three main builds here can make up this deficit. The locomotive starts us on the right track. A bat bejeweled boiler rests atop this Technic frame, which in turn provides an attachment point for the axles. You may have noticed that the wheels themselves are identical to those found on the other Time Twister sets, rather than specialized LEGO train wheels. Indeed, this means that the Twisted Time Train cannot run on standard LEGO track, and unlike a set such as the original Hogwarts Express, it cannot be easily modified for this purpose either. This is largely due to the integrated play feature within the steam engine itself. You see, the entire funnel is actually a separate piece altogether. It simply rests on a Technic bushing that causes it to bob up and down, as well as rotate. This is a sleight of engineering we have seen before in this series, and it works just as well here. Taking a few cues from the Hypnocruiser, it seems Professor Millennium was a fan of the dual cockpit design, even retaining the two steering wheels, windshield elements, and a transcendental reception machine. The Professor was actually able to improve upon the design by integrating a clever seating arrangement. The plate plus grill piece combo became quite prolific and common as time went on, but it was still extremely novel by 1997 seating standards. Overall, the engine of this train is one of my favorite models to come out of any Time Cruiser set. I think the design team absolutely nailed the execution here. Let's see if the other train cars can live up to this standard. Moving on from the locomotive, our first piece of rolling stock is quite an odd one. Consisting primarily of wooden palisade pieces from LEGO's iconic western theme, this car also features not one, but two rubber bands working in tandem. As the front wheel turns, it provides movement to the central hypnodisc, the last of the blue and black variety we will ever see. The second rubber band connects this axle to another wheel, which spins the crow's nest round and round. This perch is manned by our deathly wizard, and seems to be equipped with a large yellow megaphone. In the Click comics, it seems that this is actually a sonic blaster of sorts. I guess it's whatever your imagination wants it to be. The final play feature of this train car involves these flapping wings on the back. Similar to the Whirling Time Warper, these wings move up and down in time with the rotation of the rear wheels. It's a little less sophisticated here and can be intrusive sometimes, but it gets the job done. The last element of prominence is the inclusion of these awesome Fright Night shields, one on each side. Beyond that, there is little else to see here, a platform to patrol, and a barrel to store weapons or plunder. Let's move on to our caboose. 
The final train car boasts a distinctly medieval theme. With large black castle walls and turret outcroppings, this piece of rolling stock looks roughly how I'd imagine a Time Twister's base would appear. Because we never received one officially, we'll have to just imagine what it may have looked like. The steep black staircase leads up to the sole action feature of this section of the train. When the front wheel spins, the ghost on this platform bobs up and down and slightly rotates. We've seen this trick before in Time Twisters, in fact, we saw it earlier this episode. This does make the caboose feel slightly phoned in, unfortunately, and these lousy chains along the side don't make matters better, they only serve to annoy me. <laughs> I recommend removing them entirely. The aesthetics alone are going to have to carry this one, so if you're like me and love the concept of castle, but it's a train, then you should have no problems here. Functionally, I think this is the weakest of the three builds, but I do think it has a lot going for it with the visuals. A classic grey parrot and pair of trans neon orange antennae leave us on a positive note. Even though the box, photography, and instructions tell us to assemble the train this way, the two pieces of rolling stock can be interchanged by the use of these hitch pieces. This also means that we can add our own trains into the mix, and seeing as there are no alternate builds to explore here, I think we should go for it. Firstly, one glaring absence really struck me with this set. The Time Twisters are temporal bandits, right? Then where is their vault car for protecting the valuable treasures they've acquired through their travels? I've created this little mock to fill that role and took a number of nods from Time Twister design language in the process. The trans neon orange containers grant some high tech security for their loot, both big and small. The Fright Night stylings return once again in the form of Chiroptera statuettes and another printed coat of arms. There are no play features to speak of here, but if I were to redesign this model, I think I would try to make the containers removable via a magnet system. Might be worth a try in the future. Another train element I felt was missing here was a long, flatbed car. What might the Time Twisters need to transport on a car this big, you may ask? Well, how about a whole other time machine? I call this invention the Chrono Crawler, the very latest in Professor Millennium's rickety gadgets. This build spawned from the desire to find a use for these insectoid pieces I had lying around. Plus, I found the idea of fixing a hypnodisc to the back of a ship's wheel to be too ridiculously alluring to pass up. The Chrono Crawler utilizes some undoubtedly anachronistic pieces for 1997, but that's the beauty of time travel. When en route to the next destination, the time machine folds up for storage on the train car with these chains helping to tether it in place. Overall, I think these mocks add a ton of personality to a set that already had a lot in that department. The stock model is still great on its own, but it also leaves the door wide open for creative additions like these. As our twisted time train nears the end of the line, I want to take a look back at Tony and Millennium's contributions to this series, and to LEGO as a whole. I know many folks out there see the Time Twister sets from 1997 as an upgrade to the Time Cruiser sets from 1996, and I can see where they're coming from. Aesthetically, the blue, black, brown, gray color scheme is quite cohesive and complementary. So much so that seeing some of these colors reunite in other themes can spark Time Twister's nostalgia. Tony Twister and Professor Millennium never reappeared in any future sets, kind of. So their personal legacy ends here. However, I would like to think that the refined play features found in these three sets would inspire gimmicks and mechanisms in LEGO themes for years to come. We're going to miss their relentless shenanigans, but wherever they are now, I hope they're still living at large. We have but one final set to look at in this retrospective series, and it just might be the most zany and unique so far. I've been your host, R.R. Slugger, and time flies when you're having fun.